Welcome to Battalion 1944, the upcoming old-school World War II shooter from Bulkhead Interactive. The developers have been kind enough to let me upload some footage here of their game. I got to play it for the very first time last week in London. It comes with a message, however. This footage, of course, comes from a very early build of the game, pre-alpha material, and it isn't representative of the final product. This footage hasn't been edited in any way, but the team have removed buggy gameplay as they felt it wasn't acceptable to show that at this stage. For clarity, this footage was recorded on a PC fitted with an Intel i7 6th generation processor, 8GB of RAM and a GTX 1080 graphics card. Now that's out of the way, what do I think of Battalion 1944? Well firstly, let me explain the footage. It's fairly easy to see that we're playing Team Deathmatch here, and we're playing on a map called Manor. This is one of the several maps that's already been detailed by the developers at Bulkhead, and from speaking to them, this one seems to be a lot further ahead in development than the others, but by no means is it finished. Team Deathmatch is not the highlight or the central game mode of Battalion 1944 either, that's likely to be Search and Destroy. Joe Brammer, the lead developer on Battalion, said that Manor is one of the maps that's existed in several different forms so far, with the layout changing quite a lot since the concept stages. Some of the major points are the Manor itself, which has a fully accessible interior, We've got a low-down trench network that stretches right across the centre of the map, a large barn on the far side that looks out over the trenches and you can see the manor house from it, and you've got a crashed airplane on the lane outside the front of the manor. From a movement and positioning perspective, the map felt very fluid and very slick. There were no noticeable pain points where gameplay would break down or lose its flow, and the verticality changes between the upstairs rooms of the manor and the barn and the trenches down low made for some interesting combat situations. At this stage, having spoken to the developers about their direction for the game, they're working on nailing the feeling and experience of old school shooters before they move on to the maps, the in-game content, and then other things that comes with development. Now from my two hours of playtime, it's pretty clear that they've locked in a certain feeling pretty well. Things like strafe jumping is a key element of gunfights, and the maps are even designed with them in mind. Certain objects can only be reached via strafe jumping. An interesting point on that, the developers wanted to embody the old school feeling that much, they had to build strafe jumping into the Unreal Engine. The whole movement system has been built into the base engine, and it feels almost identical to some of those older Call of Duty titles. And of course, the strafe jump comes with that. Technically, it was a glitch in the old Quake engine, and that's what Call of Duty was built on, so that glitch had to be reproduced and directly coded into the game. That's pretty impressive, considering Epic Games, who own the Unreal Engine, deliberately made sure something like the strafe jump couldn't happen in their engine, so the Battalion developers had to hard-code it back in. That feeling that the developers were going for though, as I said, I think they've done a very good job of that so far. Gunfights rely on positioning and movement most of the time to ensure you are the winner, and that simply just translates to skill within the game. It's a very raw feeling in comparison to many other first person shooters that are being built today. They have a lot of fluff around the edges. Think of suppression in Battlefield 1 for example. That gets in the way of gunfights. Here, if you're not in the right position and your aim isn't on point, you're not going to win the gunfight. There's nothing helping you, there's nothing stopping you from winning the gunfight, only you and your skill level. When I was playing with and against the developers, it was clear that they had the advantage over me within the first few rounds because they had map layout knowledge and obviously they have experience of playing the game already. I mean, they're building it and playing it every day. But within the first few rounds, I began to understand the movement a little bit more. I started to use it within gunfights and very soon, once I'd started stringing a few movements together, landing a few kills in a row, I started to grow in confidence. And that for me is a very good sign. After just one and a half hours, I had the basics nailed down, but mastering it is gonna take a lot longer. 
That old saying, easy to learn, hard to master, has never sounded truer than it does when you apply it to Battalion 1944. You can quite easily pick up the game and within a few rounds have the basics locked away, but the more advanced stuff like manipulation of the movement system, better knowledge of the maps, knowing which objects you can traverse, etc., that simply comes with time. The developers were pulling off some awesome moves during the rounds, and all I had to do in the kill cam was just basically sit back in my chair and applaud them. Dedication, practice, and simply time spent playing this game is the way to master Battalion 1944. It's all about you and your skill. And of course, I will say this again, this is just in pre-alpha, and I think they've got that feeling of an old-school shooter pretty much nailed down at this point in time. If you're looking for information in terms of content, the amount of maps, what customization there's going to be, weapons, all that kind of stuff, I haven't really got any information for you in this video simply because I didn't ask the developers what they were doing for that. Before we started, they had this conversation about the feeling and they wanted feedback on that and they wanted to know what I thought about it. So I didn't really deviate from giving them feedback on all of that kind of stuff, both at the start and at the end, because of course my feedback within the first few games would have been very different to the feedback at the end of the one and a half hours because I'd learned a little bit about the game, had a little bit more knowledge that I could draw from. In terms of content though, that just didn't come up. I'm sure in the future the developers will detail like weapons, customization, progression in the game. I'm sure that's going to come along in the future and you will start to see that once the game moves into early access. But right now, Really sorry, I don't have any information for you. If I were to sum up all of my thoughts, all of my opinions about Battalion 1944 down into like one word or one sentence, and bear in mind this is pre-alpha, very stripped out, a very light version of the game, I'd probably have to say I'm excited about this game. It's got a lot of promise, it's got a lot of potential, but the team have created a really solid foundation from which they can build. And once they're happy with this feeling that they're going for, the old school arena style World War II shooter, then they'll go ahead and make it look the part. More and more information is likely to come out about Battalion 1944 in the coming weeks. The developers are showing the game off for the first time to the public at EGX Resed over the next few days. And as we move further into 2017, you'll no doubt see some big developments. That first milestone is Steam Early Access. That's been my initial impressions of the game. I really hope you enjoyed it. I've got lots more gameplay left over, so I'm going to let that run out now so that you guys can see as much of this game as is humanly possible at the moment. But thank you very much for watching, and until next time, my name is Westy, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.